What's up, YouTube? It's you guys, the Hot Chat Hot Wars, back at it again with a banger. We hope you enjoy our video on food in space. Food in space by the Hot Shot Hot Wires. Introduction. Foods taken into space must be lightweight, compact, tasty, and nutritious. They must also be kept for long periods <laughs> without refrigeration. They are currently coated with gelatin or oil to prevent crumbling. How they do it. Food is dehydrated through freeze drying. All of the moisture is sucked out of the food in a vacuum chamber and then launched into space inside the ISS. Onboard hydrogen oxygen fuel cells provided a source of water that could be used to moisten dehydrated or freeze dried foods. Once the food is hydrated again, the astronauts then eat the delicious meals. Some problems are the limitations on weight, volume, and stability of space food, together with the lack of of refrigeration favor the use of dehydrated foods. It requires months of advanced planning. You have to follow a strict diet. You have to use rehydratable foods and drinks. Foods often taste bland. Food has to be tightly packed. Digesting food may be difficult. There are no refrigerators. One future space food, MRM, an ancient grain, has been chosen as a possible space food by Aleka Borsuk. She suggests trying to enlarge the plant by changing the position of the lighting. Another food scientists are trying to launch into space is Tokyo Bikana Chinese cabbage, mentioned by astronaut Peggy Whitson. This is the fifth crop grown on the ISS. Astronauts report that their taste buds dull during space flight and they need to add hot sauce, honey, or soy sauce to bland foods. Some Sites that I visited to create this slide. Please watch some clips from my field trip to the World Science Festival to learn more about food in space. We do have pretzels up there um, that people have sent us. Like we have these uh, crew specific containers that come up and your family can put some things in there for you when they're sending up more cargo. And Sometimes if you like pretzels, your family will send you pretzels, but pretzels will break up into little pieces. So normally if you eat something like that, you'll go over near like the, where the ventilation, where the, the air flows, and you'll make sure you're near something that would suck all the extra pieces in so that it doesn't make a mess out of it. But it's still worth getting pretzels and eating them by there so that you can have pretzels. I need that machine in my house <laughs> for my daughter. Just have her sit by that when she eats her pretzels. What's your question? Um, has anyone ever lost their, like, tortilla by accident in the space station? Has anyone ever lost their tortilla has by ever accident? Lost a tortilla? I'm, I'm not aware of any lost tortillas. They're not floating De around. And definitely lost glasses on the space station. Well, and my paint kit is lost on space station. <laughs> what's your favorite food, Nicole, out in space? Wow, in space, I really love, you know, because we're an international space station, you know, we all work as one crew together. Um, there's modules from all the different countries. There's also food from all the different countries. And I really loved the Japanese curries. They were really good. I really liked the macaroni and cheese. That was delicious. And um, I don't know, I, I, as far as drinks, I just enjoyed, they had this, uh, wa you could just fill a water bag and it had like dehydrated lemon in it. So it made it taste like lemon water, and well, it was lemon water, I guess, and that was that was really good to me. Yeah. Did you have any We're talking about nutrition and about coming back. What advancements have you been a part of, or have you seen in um, in food nutrition with astronauts over the past few years, or or that you see coming in the in the future? That you're well, there's several things. One um, one that comes to mind is that we found um, in one of our studies that the crew members that ate more fish lost less bone and i think there's a couple things tied into that but, but fish is very good for you fish has omega-3 fatty acids which are very good for you and it turns out um are very are very good for your bones as well so when you put the exercise as nicole talked about with good nutrition um you can literally help protect your bones so that you don't lose bone during space flight. it's the same uh advice we get here supplements or does it not it's it's not that easy it's not that easy especially with fish and omega-3 fatty acids 
what you need to do is change the, the ratio of different fatty acids in your body. So that when you're eating fish, you're not eating meat typically. So the idea that you could eat meat and sprinkle some omega-3 fatty acids on it to, to counteract that, it, it doesn't work that way. So you really do need to change your diet overall. You need to eat more, more fruits and vegetables, you need to eat less meat, more fish, um, and that will help a lot in your systems. So the goal, if you will, is try to figure out how nutrition can help to mitigate some of those negative effects. Carrots, right? That's what... <laughs> Carrots are one. Carrots? Um, That's what I was uh, always told. Green leafy vegetables. Kale. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so how about, uh, Nicole, when you came back, what were some of the effects that you, you felt after coming back from the station? What you feel really, really heavy. I mean, I think that's, you, you know, everybody kind of reacts differently, whether you've been up there 10 days or six months, you know, there's there's not like a, this person's this tall and this wide, they're gonna respond this way to coming home in space. There doesn't seem to be a real pattern to it yet. Everybody has kind of this individual response, but everybody feels really, really heavy to where you have to feel like you have to lift your head up, Feel like the bottom half of your leg weighs 100 pounds <laughs> so you're just thinking about having to stand up straight and i think it goes back to like the food and exercise as this countermeasure to being in space is that it really is important to get up off the couch and move we are heavy and just moving around is good for us and um you know to come back and have that it's like a reality check of oh my gosh i really weigh something we don't think about it during the day when we're just moving around ourselves. And so we had the chance to look at some space food samples on our trip to the World Science Festival. We will show you some of the pictures. In this picture, at the top you can see a shrimp cocktail, and at the bottom there are Italian vegetables. These freeze-dried meals are reconstituted by connecting the food packets to a warm water supply. In this picture, at the top, there are vegetables with pork and rice, and at the bottom, there's asparagus. These may look yucky, but astronauts say that they taste just as good as freshly cooked meals. In this picture, there are M&Ms, or as NASA calls them, candy-covered chocolates. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please slam a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as hard as you can.